Alright, hello everybody. I'm here playing some Phasmophobia again, and I'm going to, as promised last game, to show you what this means. There's all these symbols that show up on the ground, and I am going to show you what each of them mean. I'm going to take you through the little steps. It's going to be heavily instructional, but we're going to go in order and see what each symbol means, and I will show you where to go. It'll be very, very instructional. So, we're gonna start with this, this bad boy here, and we're gonna see what this symbol means. This one, you can find in Willow Street House, over in this one, 13 Willow Street. I shall show you, I'm playing on amateur just to make it easy and quick. All right. We're Next here. We have a Donald Martin. Not very important because we need this. Uh, we'll take that and we're just kind of looking for the ghost right now. So what you want to do is you want to well, obviously leave the area. Uh, show up to the Willow Street house. Um, weather shouldn't be too much of a problem. Foggy. Might make it a little harder later eventually, but you'll find out why soon. So to find the first part of this, there are these things are, uh, it's a little bit of like a mystery egg hunt, essentially. We've got a little treasure hunt to go on. We've got locations that they do and things to solve. And the first thing you want to solve is that symbol. So you come in here, you come to this last room on the end, and you come to this. We have the symbol, the same symbol here, and we have feed me black stones and the fire will grow. In return, I will heat this snowed in hell and home. Now, that's a fun little riddle to tell you another location in the game. And this one, feed me black stones, it means and fire will grow. It means that it's talking about a coal-fed furnace. And in return, I will heat this snowed in hell and home. Now, if you don't remember, if you weren't there for it, there was an Easter egg long before of the old asylum map where this patient was drawing with UV all over the, uh, the walls because that was her home. And so as an Easter egg, they made it so that uh, she would talk about going to Sunny Meadows, a new facility that she would eventually be calling home. And it is certainly a hell and a home. But the thing is also, we have to make sure it's snowing, I'm pretty sure. Because we have to go to a snowy Sunny Meadows and find a coal furnace. You click on this here. You can go over to the custom section and you can hit this little symbol here and then go over to contract and set the weather to be snow. I'm probably going to just do a quick amateur reset, a preset because I'm not here to find the ghost. I'm here to help you. And then you hit apply or whatever I just hit and you can go to sunny meadows. It'll be custom so that it'll be snowy when we go in. All right, we're here. Okay. So now, Jerry Marsh, we have to find that symbol. We have to find that coal furnace, and we have to find the place where it is snowing. I'll bring a better flashlight for you guys to see. But we take the keys, we open the door, and we look at the snowy weather. What you want to do is you want to come into the building. And we'll be making our way pretty far back into the building. There's only one place that has a coal furnace. A coal-fed location in which fire can grow. And you want to go right here, turn down this big, long, spooky hallway, <sighs> run out of breath, and make your way all the way down to the end. Turn left once again, follow the hallway. 
and make your way to this middle door here where you will find essentially the kitchen. A very dark, not very well lit kitchen. And you want to go through the back on the right here of the kitchen where we will find coal fed furnaces. You can even see that there's oh hold on a second. There's even coal here for you to you know pick up and look at. But what we are looking for is essentially in this room somewhere. We need to find a symbol, but where do you find it? Well if you remember we were using a UV light previously to find the other thing, and now we use a UV light to find the symbol. And look at that. Symbol equals P. So now we have the first letter, and we know that it is P. And now we go find the next letter. So now we've seen this letter, and we know that it is P. The next letter we want to go for is over here. This will be the next letter we are going to go look for. Right over here, this little circular boy. That one we can find in Tanglewood. We're gonna go in, we have a Rosa, Rose Garcia. All right, so this one we have to find on Tanglewood, obviously, and what you do is you come down this hallway, go straight, take a left here at this door, come this way, come into this room, and go into this door on the right. Now what we're looking for is actually behind the door. It's a sneaky little one. We're looking for emerging from a watery grave, a quiet spot to watch the sun rise. And then we have to go to a place where something emerges from a watery grave and we have to have a sunrise weather appropriate with it. So here, what it's talking about is Yet another little Easter egg that is found on one of the campsite maps. And I'll take you there and show you. So what you want to do again is change the weather to be sunrise. I think maybe it's over here. Nope, over this way. Oops. There you go. It had to be sunrise weather. And you want to go to the Maple Lodge campsite. It is a larger map. It is very pretty. It recently got a remake, a little facelift. We have a Christopher Myers. Yeah, look at that. And so, what we have to do is, this one is a little longer, a little bit of a, more of a fancy way to go through, but see, we've got a lovely sunrise going on at Maple Lodge campsite. So, I'll take you this way, why not? We'll go through the staff only door on the right here. Go through, walk around, and through the little, nice, lovely, lovely little wooded off area, the little fenced in area, I guess. Go through this door and go straight. And we will turn here and once again go straight pretty straightforward, you know, <laughs> and we want to make our way to this little dock here. Oops. It's a lovely little place. And here we can see the beautiful sunrise, the silhouette of a, of a lighthouse. We've got a lovely canoe here, and we have this, this little Easter egg. I guess I should have looked before, but it rises out of the water, and when you're looking around here, you want to use your little thing, and bam! We have the letter O. So far we have P-O, and we have a little funky little Jason mask, a little nod to the Friday the 13th. Oh, Alright, so now we found P, and we found O, and now we want to find this one. Up here, this weird cross-looking one. And that one, we have to go to the lovely Edgefield. Okay, we have a William Moore. This one's pretty quick. You want to leave the little van, walk outside, do a pretty much a full U-turn, and walk towards this little 
roads. Uh, there's a little roadblock here. Yeah, that's a little. That's a little bright, but I'll try to angle it so you can see it there. That should be good. Uh, down the stairs to a chair that rocks, I support the house above. Now this one refers to a, st a chair that rocks, which, you know, should mean a rocking chair. Those are pretty common things. And I support the house above. So we're looking for some kind of support in a house and that's downstairs and that has a rocking chair. And that one refers to Tanglewood. There is a rocking chair in the basement of Tanglewood. There's a fun little rocking chair. You can sometimes get the ghosty goo to rock that shit. Now this one doesn't require a weather. So you can just, I don't know, leave the weather to be what it was and let it randomize. Yeah. We have a they Ted the Harris. So for this, luckily, we do not need a particular weather. This one does not depend on a weather. It never specifies a weather. So you can do this on whatever weather, even if it randomizes, and you should be good. So for this, go through here, go to the right, and go down the door on the left into the basement. What we're looking for, if you recall, is a chair that rocks, and we're looking for something that supports the house above, which, if you look around, there are all of these beams, these support beams. Now, turn off my light, my lights, and I go to the UV, we, oh, we turn it around, we look around, and what's this? The rocking chair and the support beam. And we have the letter I. So now we've got P O I. So now we have P O I. And now we're looking for this guy. This funky little curly hand dude. That we find on Bleasdale. We go over to here, go on to Bleasdale farm map, and we jump in. We have a Betty Dexter. For this one, you want to go along, straight from there, obviously, hop into the house, go up the stairs on the right here, make your way up, turn left down the hallway. Maybe I turn on a light, make it easier. If you have the F breaker on immediately, you can do that. You go along, go up to the stairs here, maybe even turn those on, and right here you can see it. It's a very tricky one. A lot of people ended up having trouble with this. Oh, oh we have a ghost right there. I'm gonna Oh, you turned off the water too. Okay, I was gonna turn it off. Sorry for the distraction. So this one we have the symbol here, and it reads, In light rain and snow, I never rest, defending fruit for my foes above. Bring me a light that keeps me warm. So for this one, we want to have the weather be light rain or snow. It's nice that they have a choice. And then, I never rest defending fruit from my foes above. This refers to ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba, a scarecrow. There is a scarecrow that defends pumpkins from uh, crows above. And we need to bring it a light that keeps it warm. A lighter will work for this. Uh, matches a lighter or a zippo. There's different tiers and I think all three of them should be working. And we have to go to the other farmhouse actually. It is located on the other farmhouse and I'll show you where that is. So once again you want to come over to here and select snow or light rain. I think we'll do snow just because it's 
fun and I like the snow. So we're going to Grafton Farmhouse. We have Harold Lavender. Lavender is a dev name actually. Which is a little fun thing to do. And now, this one, I've got Zippos, or a lighter, or a uh, matchstick should work. I'm curious about uh, the candles. I can't remember if candles will work or not, but I will still give it a shot. It should work with a candle as well if you want to bring a candle or an oil lantern. But this one is a little different because we have to go find a scarecrow. So what you want to do is come up to the front of the house, turn right. This one we want to be outside for. And it's a little dark, but we want to come around to the side of the house, turn down, turn left, go down the right side, turn left to go right, you know. <laughs> Walk all the way to the back and you will find pumpkins. And even this funky little guy. Look how cute. And now, we also find a scarecrow. Now, if you recall, all of the symbols have been via a UV light. But as you can see, it does not work because we have to use a lighter or something to keep him warm. So I'm going to light the candle and bam, the light of the candle shows the symbol. We have the letter N. It even works with a lighter or a matches. Candle seems to work a lot better. They have a wider range of light. So if you can bring a candle, candelabra, or a gas light torch, lantern thingy, probably be a little more helpful to read, but here you go. So now we have P O I N. And now we're looking for this last little letter here, this funky looking arrow doodad, like a little umbrella thing, almost a heart in a way. That one we will be finding on Ridgeview. So, I want to go to Ridgeview up at the top here. Oh, we have whatever his face is, Lavender, his brother, Luke Lavender, another dev name. So Once fancy. Armored, so for this, you want to go out the front. Obviously, leave the van. All of them, you're going to have to leave the van. Go to the lovely ridge view. Make your way onto the porch. And then look to the right. And behind this chair and beside the windowsill, we have this. Let's see if this will work better. Oh, that's so much better. So we have this symbol. In a place where hands must be seen at all times, I hide where water falls on command. There is a place in the prison that tells you hands must be seen at all times. And it is in big letters on one of the walls in the prison. And I hide where water falls on command. Water falls on command if you are turning on a shower. So what we have to do is go to a place where hands must be seen at all times in prison and go to a shower. Again, this is not a weather dependent one, but we go to the prison over here and we ready up and hop right the hell in. Okay, we have Cora Cray. Interesting. Looks like this is going to be a tough one. We've had reports of violence. What you want to do is you want to head out the front, go to the left, obviously, enter the building, the ominous, ominous prison. You want to go through the metal detector, make sure you're not bringing any metal items, you know. Go forward up to these doors here. Go through, turn right, and go up to this door here, open it, and keep going straight to this door here. Now there are two showers in this map, and we're looking for these ones here because 
as you can see here, keep hands in plain view at all times. This was a little fun detail that I remembered the first time I tried to find these things. And, if you look, we have a ton of showers. So we're in a place where we can keep hands visible at all times. And now we're looking at where the water falls on command. And what you want to do is look through all of them. Go and find the symbol, which is T. So now, with all that knowledge, this P-O-I-N-T. I have a star shape that spells out point. <laughs> point. Yeah. God, that's this little puzzle right here. And we're moving on to this one. Which, if you look around, we've got this funky fresh fella here. This little devil with a whip. And this one we can find on Camp Woodwind. Over here in this little ass corner. Nelly Bailey. Cool. Anyways, continuing. Camp Woodwind. You want to go in... Go straight across around here. You want to go around this big log circle. You can go that way as well if you want. Not really a big problem. And come to this tent here with all the stuff. Go to the coolers as you can see. You want to read. Peer out from a bedroom window onto a wall in fog above the basement reveals all. This one. You have to find a wall that sits above a basement. This one was very tricky. A little confusing. Because it talks about a bedroom and a basement. But you have to peer from the bedroom to a wall that is above a basement. And there are only a few maps that have a basement. And a bedroom in which you can see the basement from. And what this one is referring to is there is a basement up, uh, is on Willow Street that has a bedroom that you can peer out from. So now we want to go back to Willow Street over here on the right. Again, it is fog dependent. So we want to make sure we set our uh, weather to fog. Very important. Otherwise, it will not work. We have a Jerry West. Okay. So here, we want to go look the front once again. Into the lovely, lovely fog. Go into the house. Turn on some lights as we go along. So here, we have a garage over here. There is walls as you can see around it obviously and over here there is a basement which the basement is right below the garage here and if you think about it there is a bedroom right here with a window that looks towards the basement and has a wall because of the garage. This one, I believe we can try to climb up this. There we go. You climb up onto the bed here in this bedroom. There is a wall above the basement, if you remember. And we shine our UV light through. And we get our little symbol on the wall. Here, little guy. Little demon guy whipping the letter H. So now that we have found the letter H, we want to find this one here. This little eyeball, little maybe crying eyeball, little drippy ass boy. And this will be on prison. So now we have to head back to prison. 
We have Joseph Petit. This one, very simple, very easy, quick and, quick and easy. What we want to do is walk out of the thing, the van, turn right, do a little U-turn over to here. This one, very sneakily, is right on the outside of the van. You would think it would be on the inside, but alas, it is hiding in plain sight in the outside of the van. So, exit the building where learning occurs to find the start of a maze outside. So this one refers to going to a place where learning occurs and as luck would have it, there is a school map. And it looks like you are meant to go outside. Go to a maze outside. So you have to exit the building from the school. Now this one was a pretty tough one to find the beginning of, but I can show you that in just a second. So we go to Brownstone High School. Not weather dependent, but I might remove the fog just to make it easier for people to see slightly. Not that important, but luckily it has no weather dependency. Right. So we Check have Marsha Rhodes. And we shall take a casual outfit. We want to leave the place. got my high school all set up here. I believe I want to go to the right instead of going through the front. This way is just a little easier, a little more straightforward to some degree. You could also go through the front, go up to the front of like go across the lobby and turn right. Here we are just going to go straight to this door on the right side of the place and walk right in. And what we are going to do is we are going to walk straight. There was the entrance and we just walk straight all the way down to the end of the hallway. But it does say exit the building where learning occurs. And the only exits we have are on the front, on the sides here, but they want you to exit from it, which means you have to enter the building first to exit. And so we exit, and our first clue is here, telling us to go on a little path. And so now we go to the right. We find this symbol here. It wants us to go down, but we can't go down, so it's telling us to go this way. And we look up at the tree, the two little symbols here. We look here, we have this little symbol telling us to go this way. And now we go this way. And now we find another little symbol here. Follow it along. See that we have to go this way. Keep walking this way until we find another one. It tells us to continue walking this way. You see that we have to go down again. Go this direction. Find this little workbench. Workbench, this little bench. We'll go this way. Go to the bush. And here we have the symbol. The letter E. Now this one is a lot of fun because I will show you over here is the main that entrance that we came through right now if you were to approach from a different angle I shall show you what to do there so the fun thing about this map is that there are two exits I will show you the pathway to go for the other exit. We came in through this door over here, walked all the way up to this one here. You could alternatively go through here 
and walk this way to the end. Or you can go this way and turn left and go down on the left side or enter through this little door here and go all the way to the end. I will show you this now as well. Maybe it's not the most useful. You really only need to pick one direction, but for those that like a little bit of diversity, we will also check out this left path. And here we go. I will shorten this one a little bit just to make it easier. It is pretty straightforward, literally. Just walk from this door all the way down to the end. Keep going straight. And then at the end here, you find another exit in which you can go through and activate your UV and find another arrow on the left side telling you to go this way, look here, look there, look down, move this direction, find another arrow to keep going, another arrow to keep going, Eventually finding this little arrow, almost missed it there, <laughs> keep your eyes peeled, and go this way. Walk up to this hole in the fence, actually. You turn on this so you can see it. Very fancy little thing. Apparently we can't go through that. So you have to come over here to this thing here. And we have to go through onto this tennis basketball court, which apparently exists. I don't know the real reason why this is here. Oh. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> I don't know why it exists. I don't know why this stuff is back here. There's never really been anything. Oh. Anything over here. That is fascinating. Anyways, we saw that symbol from over here and through this hole in the fence. We find this symbol telling us to look this way. So we go along here until we find Ah, here we go. Until we find this one that's a little off to the side from where we were. Telling us to go back over here. Keep going through and once again exit from where you came in. Go to find this little symbol on the ground, and there we go. An alternative route to finding this one, depending on which path you take. Now, because I told you the path, that the left side path or the right side, depending on which direction you're looking at it from, you probably end up taking that one. But this one's very fun because it tells you to go all kinds of directions and makes you go makes you work a little longer for it. Yes. We have the letter E. So now that we have the letter E, we can find out that we've already found these symbols. This square word here, we already have all of these symbols found. We have H. We've already found O. We've already found P. And now we just found E which spells out hope. Point hope. It is a fun little Easter egg that appeared. And so we have a Helen Shellen. But as I, as I was going to say, we have this right here on the board. Strange affair in a lighthouse. Three keepers disappear. That is a very interesting piece of information as when we go to check out this map, if you recall, it is Maple Lodge Campsite. We are here in the big Maple Lodge Campsite. If you remember from earlier, I was telling you about an Easter egg of Friday the 13th, the Jason Mask, and if you recall, we have a Jason mask that rises up out of here, one little Easter egg, and we also have 
a visible lighthouse. Now this lighthouse has been in this game for quite some time and Insim himself was saying that it would be very cool if we had a lighthouse map because we could see it. It was such a very visible thing. Just a little detail, a little artistic piece of the background, but it was always something so interesting and it is so well lit by the moon here. Now, if we head back because this map got a revamp, they have even they have doubled down further upon this Easter egg, upon this little mystery that we have going on. And if you come back to the beginning of the map, you will find that there is when you enter the map there is a giant lodge. The the reception area. Now here, we will find a map. So here we have the Maple Lodge campsite. And now we can see the lighthouse in the distance. And here we have extra confirmation that Point Hope is, in fact, a lighthouse. And there we have it. The little Easter egg of the runic symbols on the ground. The strange UV symbols that we can only see via that Point Hope Lighthouse. It supposedly and will be a new map that is coming to the game eventually. When they get it done, they want to make sure it's all nice and pretty and well thought out. And it is very, very exciting. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was easy to follow, but I hope you had fun. I'll catch you next time. We'll do some actual more gaming next time. Have a good day and night and whatever else there is. Bye!